The fly that I'm going to tie tonight is called the Cypret Minnow. It was uh, created by a local guide, a gentleman by the name of Charlie Cypret. And Charlie was a guide on Lake Whitney and the Brazos and areas around here. Interestingly enough, I found that uh, Charlie actually talked to the club in the late 90s and was here as a presenter. Um, so this is a fly that was created for our local waters. And again, it's called the Cypret Minnow. So let's get started. The first thing that I always do with my hooks is uh, flatten the uh, barb on it. This particular hook that I'm using is a fire hole 718, so it's a barbless hook, and so no need to flatten the barb. But I'll place it into the jaws of the vise, and I'm tying this with um, 140 denier flat waxed white. Uh, seems to hold up pretty well against the uh, fish biting into it. And makes a fairly durable fly. I'll start the fly line on the hook at least an eye diameter back from the hook, or back from the eye of the hook. And I do this to create an indicator for me that I don't want to tie anything onto the hook further up than that. Um, that's one of the common mistakes that new tires make is tying too close to the eye and crowding the, crowding the eye. And when they get that out in the field trying to put their leader and tip it into the hole, it's a little bit problematic. So the next thing I'm going to do is tie on a piece of bead chain. Um, this is the uh, same material that is in the pull light cords. I've just clipped two of the the uh, segments of the chain out, and I'm gonna tie that in as an eye. You could also use uh, lead dumbbell eyes. It depends on how much sink rate you want, how fast you want this to get down in the water column. So I'm gonna tie that on, and I'm gonna take several wraps over the top of the bead chain, and then reverse my direction and go diagonally across the other way. And so I'm just gonna go back and forth across that bead chain in both directions. And then eventually I'm gonna do something called a figure eight wrap that I'm going over and under the bead chain, but it's not going over or around the hook. And I do that, it tightens the bead chain up on there. At this point, normally I would take some head cement of your favorite formula and place that on there and this will dry in there and fix those eyes in place so they won't rotate out of the horizontal position. I'm going to then take my thread and wrap back to where the hook shank ends, in other words the flat part of the hook and this is usually about where the point of the hook is. I'm going to use some uh, pearlescent mylar, or excuse me, pearlescent um, estaz, and I'm going to tie that in back at that back tie-in point. I'll get several wraps under there and hold it down. And I'm going to leave my thread at the back of the hook, and I'm gonna begin to wrap the estaz up towards the eye using my fingers to kind of groom back the fibers. When I get to the bead chain eye, I'm gonna do a figure eight wrap over the bead chain eyes and then spiral wrap the estes back to that back tie-in point and tie that off with the thread. I'm gonna take a number of wraps under there and then I'm going to clip loose the tag end of that. And so now I've got a fairly nice looking body um, out of the material. And the next step I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a piece of mylar cord and I'm gonna do it about three times the length of the hook. I'm gonna cut that loose from the coil. And this comes with 
some cording inside the mylar braid. And I don't want to use that, so I'm going to simply extract that and throw it away. And then I'm going to find the midpoint of the mylar braid. And I'm going to take my bodkin and put a hole right at that midpoint. And I'm going to kind of wiggle that around a little bit. I'm trying to open up a hole in that mylar. And I'm going to take that hole and very simply, hopefully, slip it over the eye of the hook. Okay. And then I'm going to take it so it's in the vertical uh, plane of the fly. I'm going to pull back on the mylar braid so that it presses down on top of the estaz. And I'm going to take some securing wraps back at that point. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the rest of the cord on the bottom side, but I want the braid to be frayed out so that it goes on both sides of the hook. So I'll mark with my fingers where that point at the back of the hook is, and then I'm going to take my bodkin and starting at the very end, I'm going to use it to pick out the braid so that I've got individual fibers of the mylar exposed. And this is what's going to become our tail. So I'm just working back to that point where it's going to cross the hook. I'll check, not quite there, a little bit more. Okay, now I've got that teased out so all the mylar is loose. I'm going to measure under there and use my fingers kind of loosely divide the groups of mylar braid and pull it up and around and under the mylar. I can tell from that that I didn't go quite far enough. I need to go maybe another eighth of an inch or so in picking out that braid because I was not able to pull it tight enough under the hook. Again, I'm gonna split those, those frayed fibers. I'm gonna pull that under. So now I have a layer of the mylar braid on top of and underneath the body that's made of Estes. Now I need to pick out the top piece of mylar braid, just like I did the bottom. And so I'm gonna start at the end of that and work out. Um, you, if you tried to go from the point at the hook where that is and pull the mylar out, it's um, held together too well and you wouldn't be able to unbraid it. So you really do have to start from the end and work out. Okay, so now I've got that tail pulled out there. And that tail is a little bit long for me. I tend to take the mylar and make it long because you can always cut it off. It's hard to add it back in if it was too short. And what I'm looking for is a tail that is about the length of the body of the fly itself. So I'm just going to simply take my scissors in there, clip off the ends that are a little too long. I'm going to take a extra large whip finish tool because I'm actually going to whip finish back at the back of the fly. Everybody usually thinks of whip finishing at the front of the tie and we are going to do that in a minute. But in this case, I have no way to get my thread back up to the front. So I'm going to whip finish there. And I always use two whip finish knots. Um, Probably not necessary. Um, one usually holds it, especially when we come back in and put some head cement on that. But if one knot's good, two's got to be better. So I'm going to transfer my thread to the front of the eye. And really all I'm doing here is creating a thread head. 
and that's so I'm kind of pushing that mylar and the estes back up against the eyes and it does give you a little better head profile. So clip off my tag end and I've got enough of a thread head built on there at this point. I'm going to take my whip finish tool, tie a whip finish at the front of the hook and again I'll do two just for extra security. I'll clip that off and now I like to use some some head cement on both of those knot areas so I'm going to be careful and come in there and place just a little bit of head cement right on where both of those whip finish thread wraps are. And that is the Cypress Minnow. Um, was designed by Charlie to target our native sand bass. So I thought this was a very appropriate fly to tie right now since we're just at the back end of the sand bass run. Thank you very much.